Today's youth need teachers, volunteers, and most of all, well, they need you. I'm Doug Edwards, and I'm going to be talking with real youth mentors and students to give you the knowledge you need to be the best youth worker possible. This is Youth Worker on Fire. Hi, Youth Worker Nation. Here's another episode, another short for you. We're going to talk about volunteers. And how do you get volunteers, and how many volunteers do you need? And those are all good questions. And those are questions that I had for a long time and did not really have the answers till I read a book called Unsung Heroes. So if you can find that book on Unsung Heroes about volunteerism, then you're going to go a long way. You're going to get some real incredible information it saved me from not having enough volunteers uh, to having more and more volunteers and not being afraid to look for them all the time and what is this with volunteers number one everybody does not need to volunteer in the area that you want them everybody does not work with students well but everybody can volunteer somewhere i have this one guy that we would do these big uh, bounce events we'd have the big blow up uh, events uh, that were like a story, two stories high, fill up a gymnasium with them. Sometimes we do it outside. And I remember David saying to me, he says, you know what? I can't stand teenagers. And I said, well, you don't need to work with me. He says, but he said, I want to support you. I like what you do with them. And he says, I am a great barbecuer and griller. And so when we do the food uh, on site, let me be that guy. I said, absolutely. And so I had people that would do that. I had other people that didn't want to be with teenagers, but they were great at organization. So I had one lady, Dottie Freeman, ended up being the one that ended up staying with me doing this organizing. She ended up organizing all three groups with our trips. She didn't want to work with students directly, but she had grandkids that were in the program and Dottie used to run industry. So she was perfect for me. She had to kind of force herself in the door because I was very cautious about volunteers, but she ended up doing more than 20 years worth of booking trips to Colorado, overseas trips, up the coast to Gatlinburg. We did a lot of trips to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, Washington, D.C., about every three years. So we did a lot of trips and mobilized anywhere from 30 to 70 people per trip. You got to use those volunteers where they are usable and everybody is usable somewhere. But if you're looking for those that are going to directly engage students, you got to make sure that they are people that are meant for that age group, that they're safe people. you got to do background checks. One guy by the name of Doug Fields, and you'll hear me refer to Doug. A lot of people refer to Doug Fields a lot. And he's got Simply Youth Ministries. You can look for some materials over there. But he was at one of the largest churches in the United States. About Ended up being about 40,000 people, I believe, there at Saddleback Church in California, uh, southern L.A., basically, near Laguna Beach. So Doug was there, and he actually had forms that people would fill out. His board members would actually, when people were coming to the church and wanting to be a part of that, be a member, they would interview these people and we would decide through different forms that they would fill out there which ministry that these different people were good for so they went through a pre-process first before it ever got to uh, Doug and his crew and then they would get the best of the best and th- from the best of the best they'd find out who was the best because they would fill out other forms there. They'd have other interviews. There's a guy by the name of Dave Ramsey. He said, you know what? I would have saved myself a lot of heartache if I had started doing in the beginning of my business what I did at the end. And at the end, he and his entire staff would interview people over a period of time 14 to 17 times each before they would decide whether or not they would be hired. The same should happen with their volunteers. Man, we want these great programs and great volunteers, but we're not willing to take the time that it takes. Now, I didn't do things that way. I ended up having forms for them to fill out. But what I would do was I would observe them for a year to two years, you know, with longevity 
longevity, you get to do things like that. And my first volunteers I inherited, they were okay people, but they were not bought into me yet. They did not buy into the program that I was going to develop yet. And usually those first volunteers, somebody begged them to be in there, so they weren't really meant for that. And they probably didn't even want to be there in the first place. So those guys don't last too long, especially when volunteers on the average last about a year. So here's what Unsung Heroes said about getting volunteers. Said, number one, tell them how hard it's going to be. In fact, tell them that it's harder than it's going to be, and they will appreciate that, and they will stay longer because they know what they're getting into. And if they say, oh, you know, that's too much for me, I really don't want to do that much, you say, well, we can use you in another way, but for this part of working with students, it's going to be tough, and so you don't need to work there. The other thing is I would ask middle school possible volunteers, I would say this first thing, and most people know the answer to this one. Do you like middle schoolers? Usually the answer is yes or no. In some cases, they would go, well, I don't know. I've never been around them. And we'd say, well, you know, come for one session, come for two, and you'll know pretty quickly whether or not you like these guys. But if they said no, we'd say, you absolutely don't need to be here. Let's take a look at other avenues where you might be able to volunteer. Some of those were good at high school. I found that my high school volunteers never wanted to deal with middle schoolers. My middle school volunteers never wanted to deal with high schoolers. And my college volunteers loved working with college students. And some of those ended up being college and 20-something people. So uh, you're gonna, volunteers are going to do different things. But make sure that you challenge them, that they know how hard it's going to be. They know how many hours they're going to need to attend, how many retreats they're going to need to go to you know i had this just a pile of stuff in the beginning that i required of my volunteers and a lot of them were younger or they were right before they had children if they were married and so they had lots of energy lots of time they would spend their money to go on those retreats and some of our retreats were very expensive because we found by the way youth worker nation that expensive good retreats not expensive for the sake of being expensive but retreats and trips that were worth spending money on were the trips and retreats that parents would buy into and these students would buy into that's why we'd go to guatemala that's why we go to colorado that's why we go to gatlinburg tennessee that's why we'd also do local things. That's why we go to Disney Night of Joy or Rock the Universe at Universal Studios. That's why we would work with Meals on Wheels and different things, organizations that would feed the poor locally. That's why we'd go to the Dominican Republic and Mexico. And we also made several attempts to go to Africa on three different occasions. That didn't work yet, but it's worked for many, many of my friends who have taken students and staff to Africa. And so those things are incredible quality, incredible value. They end up becoming very motivational. But my volunteers bought into that. Most people are going, oh, we don't want to ask too much of them. We'll lose them. The opposite is true. The more you ask of your volunteers, the more you tell them that it's going to be difficult, but it's going to be worth it. The more that you train them. We had a standard training in the fall right before school happened every year. We had multiple trainings during the year. That's time over and above that they're spending with students. But because they knew that what they were doing was worth something, some of my volunteers lasted 10 years. Some of them lasted 15. Some of them lasted 20 years. And a few of them lasted 25 years. That's crazy. That's unheard of. And we almost never had to change up or ask staffers to step down because, you know, we took so much time looking at them. And the ones that we did ask to step down, it was a very grief-stricken process because uh, these guys were really good. It was just time for them to step down possibly or there are other issues that we were having to deal with. 
But uh, all of our volunteers were just amazing people because we took the time and we told them how hard it was. Volunteers are there. Doug Field says this. If you have a certain amount of time that you need volunteers for, if you need them to be a certain way, act a certain way, what we say, what most people say in this day and time, well, we can't ask that of this generation. He said that is absolutely not true. You just have to be patient and wait because the right volunteers will come around if you are patient, if you're looking for them, and you know who to look for and how to train them. Okay, that's what I want to teach you today on volunteers. If you'll follow some of those courses and trainings and also look to youth specialties, look to a Duckfields group on Simply Youth Ministry. Orange is another organization to go to. And some of these larger churches and Campus Life, Young Life, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, go to their training crew. And I have friends in all those organizations. You go to there for training. If you can't figure out volunteerism, then find those organizations that major in full community volunteers. And those guys will teach you a whole lot. Okay, Youth Worker Nation, you know how to get in touch with us through social media. You also know that Youth Worker on Fire at gmail.com. So, Youth Worker Nation, that's another short for you. Have a good day. You've been listening to the Youth Worker on Fire podcast. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think. Stay tuned for more informative episodes.